Once the vertical vessel footing has been created in STAT Foundation Advanced, you are ready to start your design process. To perform your initial design, go over to your main navigator pane and we'll click on the vertical vessel job and then we'll go ahead and just click design. We'll confirm by clicking yes and then the design will be performed. Now after the design, you're immediately going to be sent to the calculation sheet. And this is where we're going to look up all of the relevant calculations for this particular foundation to see if it passed all relevant code checks. And that's the first thing we want to do before going any further because we need to know if we need to go back and adjust any of the parameters. So what we're going to do is we're going to scroll down. We're going to see mostly in the beginning just a kind of a refresher of this stuff that we put into the program. And then we're going to get down to our wind loads. Here we can see all the calculations are, have been performed according to the ASC 705 wind load calculation formulas. We can see our design wind pressures over here, and we can even get our table of how it resulted in the shear and moment on our vertical vessel foundation. We can see the same kind of information for our seismic loading. Here I can scroll down, I can see all of the relevant calculations. And what's nice about this is the calculations are in a form that's easy to understand and it's exactly the way I would do it if I was performing a hand calculation. So everything should look very familiar. So I can see my calculation of my base shear for each of my cases. So I have my empty load cases and my operating load cases as well. I can see my load combinations for service and ultimate stress design. And I'm starting to now get into some loading information. Now once I get down to this footing self weight area, I'm going to start to see some actual design results. And what I'm looking for is anything that says OK, meaning it passed a code check, or anything telling me that it might not be in compliance. And we can see that my first area that I'm going to get to is my pedestal design. And we can see that our diameter is actually not in compliance with PIP standards. My minimum pedestal dimension should be 7.083 and I am less than that. So I'm probably going to have to go back and adjust some of my parameters and then perform a second design to make sure I'm within all of the uh, areas that I want to be in order to get a passing code check. Before I go and do that, let me go ahead and see if there's any other issues with my initial design so I can adjust everything hopefully in the fewest amount of iterations possible. So I know I need to adjust my minimum pedestal dimension. And I'm going to scroll down a little bit more. Here I have my concrete frictional resistance check. I have all of my calculations and my result indicates that it's okay. So I know that we're doing well there. I'm going to scroll down a little bit more. I'm going to get to some stability checks. Here I can see my stability ratio is greater than my factor of safety, so that turned out okay. I have some overturning checks that also turned out okay. And then I also have some bearing checks. Again, it turned out okay. I'm going to scroll all the way down in case there's any other relevant information that I'm going to need before editing this footing. At this point, we'll go back and edit our vertical vessel foundation. And to do that, we could just click on the Edit link in the main navigator. Now we saw that our pedestal diameter was in violation of PIP standards. So the first thing we'll do is we're going to go straight to this geometry pad and adjust our pedestal geometry. Instead of a minimum pedestal diameter of 84 inches, what we'll do is we'll bump that up to 90 inches now. We'll review the rest of the information and then we'll just go ahead and click Edit. Again, we'll save our model and then we'll re-perform the design. Again, we'll scroll through our entire calculation sheet to review all of our results. And here we'll get to the pedestal design. Now we can see again our minimum pedestal diameter is over 7 feet and after this check was performed now we are satisfying that PIP standard and we're given a result of OK. 
We'll also go through and just double check the rest of our code check information to make sure everything is still okay as it was in the previous run. We can now see that we have achieved a passing vertical vessel design. We're going to save our model and then we're going to review some of the rest of the results. Now for vertical vessel foundations, we can review our CAD information. So here we have a lot of um, calculations in our calculation sheet. We can see some design checks were performed, and we can get some information about area of steel that might be required. But if we want some drawings, we can also review that as well. So up in the tabbed area of the window, I'm going to select the detail and schedule drawing, and I can review all the information on this information in this particular vertical vessel foundation including my I have a general arrangement drawing I have um, a reinforcement plan for both the base and for the pedestal and then I also have an elevation section now up in this area if I scroll over I can also find a save drawing as button which means that I can save this as a CAD format drawing as a DXF and I can open it in either AutoCAD or MicroStation, which might be a great place to start in order to start getting your design on paper. At this point, this completes our process for designing vertical vessel foundations in the STAD Foundation Advanced Plant Mode. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you and see you next time.